Hello, and welcome to the eighth video of my 10 part Breath of the Wild Any% Percent tutorial series. In this video, we're completely covering everything you need to know to make it through the Blight Ganon fights. And instead of learning more routing through the overworld, the fights are all about your weapon routing and combat skills. I'll detail each Blight's phase one and phase two attack routine by covering how to end each phase in the first cycle. And then I'll go over the backups you can use to regain control when things don't go your way. I'll talk a little bit more about Windblight here, but if you're looking for my full breakdown on how to properly set up Windblight Skip, you'll find that towards the end of my previous video, which is linked in the description. The last thing to note is that this segment and the next one on Calamity go together and will probably be the most frustrating parts of the run for you to learn and practice when first starting out, because not only are these fights inherently difficult, but you cannot practice each Blight separately. You have to work your way through Wind Blight to get to water, and both of them through Fire Blight before you can practice Thunder Blight. But once you start getting the weapon routing down with enough experience and understanding, your confidence will also grow, and the Blights will eventually become a much more manageable routine. I must say though, before you reach that point, it's helpful to find something, anything at all, that you can learn in each death or attempt that doesn't go your way, so as to better understand what went wrong and how it can be avoided in the next attempt. This makes the process a whole lot more rewarding because the boss rush fights are full of RNG, meaning that the enemies may seem mostly predictable the way we manipulate them, but there's still an element of randomness to their programming. They may get up early or move in different directions and generally keep you on your toes with surprises. So pay attention to everything they do, and with that, let's get right into it. You want to make sure that you begin the fights with the Royal Guard's bow and at least 7 arrows and the Edge of Duality equipped, as well as any shield, usually still the pot lid. And the weapons in your quick menu should be in this order. Royal Claymore, Royal Guard's Claymore, the Zell Tri Boomerang, and the Edge of Duality. Only the Royal Claymore should have been used so far, all other weapons and your bow should still be brand new and unused. Once you've set up Windblight Skip at the end of the castle segment, this segment begins as the screen fades to complete black from shooting the arrow into the sanctum as you're getting the prompt to skip the first cutscene. You want to immediately skip this first cutscene where Link is walking in from the left by mashing X and plus. You can generally do this before Link even steps in foot from the left. The second cutscene, however, you must wait and watch as this is where the damage from the arrow you just shot is done to Windblight and if you skip this cutscene, he won't be pre-damaged at all. You'll know you did it right if you see Windblight shaking. Sometimes it's hard to notice the shaking when you don't know exactly what you're looking for at first, but the most noticeable tell that he's been hit well is a throwback of his head like this right here. Sometimes he's extremely close to being killed, but there's no explosion. That just means that you are really close with your setup, but not quite on target. Something was wrong. If he is a hit or two away from death, it's worth it to try and finish him off, but if he's got too much more life than that left, it's better to reload your last autosave and try again, or find acceptance in the death of your run, because the durability on your weapons on this routing is tight enough as it is. Once you see Wind Blight explode, you can start mashing X and plus to skip Water Blight's intro cutscene and get ready to fight. Already be holding the control stick forward to walk or jog Link in close enough to bait Water Blight into doing a lunge attack with his spear. This circular central floor design is what most, if not every runner uses for several visual cues throughout the fights. Right now, for Water Blight Phase 1, you can actually reach Water Blight with the Edge of Duality as soon as Link crosses over this line into this portion of the design with the leafy patterns. That's where you want to be. Do not cross over this innermost portion here with the Triforce. If you're too close to Water Blight, he'll do a slam attack instead of a lunge, which we don't want because all it does is waste our time. What you want to do is get into this leafy portion of the design and swing from here with your edge of duality to hit water bite in the face twice. If he's moving slow, sometimes you can get three hits in, but two is totally good. As Water Blight goes to jab with the spear, you can either simply walk to the left and move out of the way, or you can jump as soon as you see that second hit connect to cancel the rest of your swing animation, and then move to the left. And as soon as he's taken his shot, now it's time for you to take yours. So hold Y to begin a spin attack, ideally going for triple hits. Two on the torso, and one on the arm, or sometimes the face. 
Remember, from the first video in this series, you can get multiple hits per rotation on a swing attack by moving Link away from an enemy while pressing and holding Y to enter a spin, and then moving back towards the enemy once spinning. To get the triple hits, position Link equally between Water Blight's body and right arm so that the edge of duality can reach both spots. If done properly, this spin attack will send Water Blight into phase two. If you miss some hits, which happens all the time when you're learning, the slam attack will stun Water Blight and you'll be able to get in a few more hits before he gets back up, and hopefully you can take him out then before he voids out and starts moving around the room, essentially wasting more of your time. If that happens, go for the kill as soon as possible to finish phase one. As soon as he voids back in, phase two has begun and you want to immediately menu three spots over to the left to your royal claymore and watch where water blight flies while preparing to shoot him with two headshots. If he flies this way over the balcony, that's okay, it's no big deal, it's just not ideal because after the second headshot, water blight is going to fall from the sky and if you shoot him straight on, he's going to fall up top and by the time you climb up there to attack him, he won't be stunned anymore. To have Water Blight ragdolled down onto the floor, you want to shoot at him from a side view. Stand to either side of the balcony pillars and he should fall down to the floor where you can run up and continue attacking. Now that he's stunned on the ground, you want to deal 5 hits with the Royal Claymore. To do this, start with a normal spin attack and get 3 hits in before letting go for the slam. It's really good information to know that when Link does 2 full rotations, at least a full 720, when you let go for the slam, it'll do double hits, one for the vertical swing attack and one for the shockwave on the floor. At this point, Water Blight will be getting up and voiding out to the other side of the room again. The pro strat is to pop off another headshot right here before he voids out and then run over to the other side of the room to shoot him with two more headshots to finish him off. But this is really tight timing and kind of tricky to pull off this shot. So fortunately, it also works to just run over to the other side of the room fire two headshots to knock him down again, and then go for a finishing headshot while he's still on the ground. Either way, now you're on your way to Fire Blight, and it's important that your Royal Claymore is still equipped at the end of Water Blight. Mash X and plus to skip through Fire Blight's intro cutscene and already be holding forward on the control stick before the screen fades back in. As soon as it does start fading back in and you see Link moving, you can press Y once to take out the Royal Claymore, and then press and hold Y to immediately begin a spin attack. Just like in Water Blight Phase 2, you want to hit him with three full regular spin attacks and then do a slam for a total of five hits. As soon as the slam animation finishes, menu your weapons once over to the right to switch to your Royal Guards Claymore and then do the same attack again, three spins with a slam attack. But this time, ideally, you'll position Link between Fire Blight's body and his left arm to get one extra hit on the arm. This requires about half a wheel of stamina. If done properly, this will deal six hits total and send Fire Blight into phase two. If you missed some hits, Fire Blight will fly up and out of reach and throw a handful of hot coals at you, which can be tricky to dodge, so I recommend just blocking them with your shield. Once he's thrown some coals, he may be low enough or start coming down low enough, giving you enough time to run up, get another couple hits in with the Royal Guard's Claymore to finally send him into Phase 2. And Phase 2 starts with Fire Blight staying up high in a protected force field bubble. What you want to do is menu your weapons to the right one space to take out your boomerang while running to the center of the arena to drop a bomb in the central triangle of the Triforce. You'll also want to be keeping an eye on where Fire Blight is positioning himself and stand towards the edge of the circle design between the bomb and Fire Blight. As he starts sucking things up into his force field and you see the bomb fly around behind him, detonate it behind his back to knock him out of the sky just forward enough to land with the back of his head right in front of Link which is our setup positioning for first cycle kill. And this is very tricky part of the Blight's fights. Start by hitting him twice with the boomerang and then throwing the boomerang at his downed body and then quickly menu your weapons once to the right to equip the Royal Claymore and set yourself up to perform a spin and tap going for triple hits on the body and big right arm. Again, this is tough to pull off, but if done properly, you can end phase two by the end of your spin attack here with a slam. 
If you didn't get enough hits to end phase two, you were either in the wrong position or you were too close to Fire Blight while you were doing the initial spins and you were clipping into him and not getting the hits that you should have gotten. Also, it's super helpful to target onto him with ZL so that he doesn't get away or go up too high and out of reach with your swings. If you didn't get enough hits to end phase two, he'll void out into a little ball and start moving around. But on the bright side, this does give you a chance to pick up your boomerang. When he rematerializes, depending on how close to death he is, he'll either go for a laser shot or the same kind of attack moves that he does at the very beginning of phase one. Continue using the Royal Claymore to attack him. It's crucial that you have the Royal Claymore equipped when you finish Fire Blight so that it's still equipped when you're entering into Thunder Blight. After Fire Blight's death, skip through Thunder Blight's intro cutscene by mashing X and plus again, and then already be holding forward on the control stick and holding B so that Link sprints straight forward towards Thunder Blight. As you sprint towards him, as soon as you're within range, start mashing Y to take out the Royal Claymore and hit his shield twice to break it. As soon as you've made the second contact and the shield is breaking, you want to turn around as fast as possible to start setting up double hits. The only way to do that is by hopping to cancel the rest of your swing animation after you see the shield break and then holding down on the control stick just long enough to get Link facing and moving away and then holding Y to start another spin attack and pressing forward on the control stick to move back towards Thunder Blight and start hitting him with the double hits. Do three full spins and a slam for a total of seven hits on this attack. This will further stun Thunder Blight for just a moment which allows you to do another spin attack. And this time you just need to do a regular spin, getting two hits, and then a slam for two more, dealing four additional hits. Eleven total on Thunder Blight with these two spin attacks. Make sure that Link does a full 720 to ensure that your second slam does those two hits. This should damage Thunder Blight enough that he flies straight up and starts throwing balls of thunder at you. If you stay close enough underneath him, he's unable to hit you. As he throws the thunderballs, already be throw aiming up at him and then move out into position and throw the claymore at him, preferably in the face. Shattering it on Thunderblight here should trigger phase two. If you don't end phase one while Thunderblight is in this state above you without his shield, phase two will not go according to plan and that's why it's so important that you start phase one with the royal claymore already equipped, you count your hits while you're dealing them, and to especially take care of your Royal Claymore's durability so that it lasts through to this point. If you missed one or two hits during the spin attacks though, you can save first cycle right now with a quick boomerang throw or two. You really only have time for about two backup boomerang throws here before Thunderblight regenerates his shield though. For phase two, Thunderblight will stay levitated out of reach and move into the center of the arena. Now, if you had an ideal second phase Fire Blight, you would have been too busy attacking him to pick the boomerang back up off the ground. And then Thunder Blight phase 1 requires your full attention the whole time, so there really is no time to pick the boomerang back up until right now at the start of phase 2, while Thunder Blight is preparing his next attack. So you'll need to go and find it and pick it up right away. If you were able to pick up the boomerang again during Fire Blight phase 2, simply menu over 3 spots to the right to equip it now. Once you have the boomerang ready, you want to move to stand on the circle design in the same leafy area that we stood at the very start of Water Blight and throw aim up towards Thunder Blight's shield. Stand still and you should never get hurt as he begins raining down metal spikes. Once you hear the fourth spike hit the ground, it's safe to throw your boomerang and aiming up towards the left of his shield tends to send the boomerang back closer to Link as it falls. And if you're playing with headphones, you can especially hear the clanking on the ground a little bit more to the left or the right in one ear or the other, which helps to know which way to go to pick it up. But before you do run to go and grab it, take this moment to aim up with the bow and fire a headshot. If you didn't have a spare arrow to shoot, throwing the boomerang at him while he's stunned here will also knock him down, but you only have a moment while he's up there so you must act fast. Once he falls out of the sky, run over towards him while picking up your boomerang along the way. Target him with ZL, mash Y until you get 4 hits with the boomerang, and the 4th hit should break his shield, stunning him yet again. Now you menu over once to the left to your edge of duality and set Link up to do double hits again. Holding ZL at this point is helpful to target onto Thunderblight in case he rises up a little bit higher so Link will still get his hits. 
and you should hold the spin attack, getting as many double hits as you can until he's dead. If you get this far and you don't kill him when Link slams, chase him down and hit him before he scoots out of range and goes for a laser shot. But if you've done it all correctly, this will finally end the Blight's fights. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> I know there's a lot going on with these fights, so here's an example of what they should look like from start to finish. As I said at the beginning, these guys are difficult and they can be frustrating to learn, but you must push through it if you want to complete runs. Don't worry, you can go through these fights hundreds of times and still see something new. You've got this. Soon enough you'll be at a point where you can consistently beat these guys. It's all about knowing what to expect and being ready for whatever does come your way. The next video will finally cover Calamity, and if you can get through Calamity, you can essentially finish your runs. We are so close now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, and leave a like on the video if it helped you at all. It helps me so much. And ask any questions you have in the comments below or in the Breath of the Wild speedrunning Discord, which is also linked in the description. And if you'd like to see me grinding live any percent personal best attempts, follow me over on Twitch. I'm grinding my time as low as I possibly can Monday through Thursday evenings until the sequel drops. Link for that is also in the description. I'd love to see you over there as well. Anyway, until next time, stay well, stay cool, and always keep punching out there. Aloha.